What's going on and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm excited to talk about some of my favorite features DaVinci Resolve 20 has implemented. Now, before we go any further, I do wanna do a disclaimer right up front. This is in beta. So if you're in the middle of a project or you have not backed up your files, I do not recommend doing this. Something that has bugged me inside DaVinci Resolve and I wish they would have added way sooner, but I'm glad it's here, is being able to have your format set up differently on your timeline when you're doing vertical videos. Now, I'm gonna show you. So right now, we've got just a normal, video timeline. It's a horizontal video. It fits fine. Everything's good. You can see if I dropped a vertical one in there, it is just laid weird. It's not really set up properly for it. However, DaVinci Resolve has changed that. So if we want a new timeline, we're going to right click timelines, create timeline. I'm going to unclick use project settings. I'm going to go to the format. I'm going to make sure I'm doing 1080 by 1920. I'm going to create that it already is setting it up way better. You can see it is so much bigger now to have this vertical video set up. Now, if I grabbed my vertical video, dropped it in the timeline, it is set up a lot better. Let's say I need to color it, go to the color tab. Look at this on the side here. It is so much bigger. I don't know if you guys remember DaVinci Resolve, any of the past ones. It was normally a box right here and it was really small and you really had to zoom in to see stuff. So the fact that they went and took the extra time to develop it and realize vertical video has a massive place in this field is awesome. Let's talk about one that I've been waiting for DaVinci Resolve to finally add and that is animated subtitles. So I've got a short video right here that I've been uploading the TikTok. I had been using the built-in titles just on the TikTok app. They worked great. It popped up and had words highlighted the way that I liked it. Keeps better retention on your videos. However, I am now going to start transitioning to DaVinci Resolve and baking it in the video. So what I need to do is make sure I've over the video that I want. I'm going to set an endpoint and then I'm just going to go ahead and set an out point so I know it's only doing that. Nothing else is on the timeline, but if there was it would make your life a lot easier. I am gonna go right up here to timeline in the top. I am gonna scroll down to where I see AI tools. Then I'm gonna move over to create subtitles from audio. I'm gonna click that. It's gonna bring up this little window. It's gonna ask me what I wanna do, language, caption presets, so on and so forth. For the characters per line, I like to keep it under 20 if it's vertical. If it's horizontal, I'll go a little more, but that's just me, what I like to do. I'm gonna hit create. It's going to start creating the subtitles depending on your computer. This is either going to go really, really fast or it's going to take a couple minutes. Once it finishes, you can see I've got all my subtitles right here. I can play through them. It looks great. It is subtitles are on there, but they're not animated. They're just flashing up. If I wanted to zoom in right here, you can see they're just laid out as different ones. These kind of subtitles have already been in DaVinci Resolve. I, however, want to animate these, which is new to DaVinci Resolve 20. So what I need to do is I need to go to effects over here on the left. I'm going to click that. I am going to go to titles and I'm going to scroll all the way down here until I see animated. The one that I like is word highlight. So I'm going to grab that. I'm going to drop it on to the subtitle line. I'm going to drop that and you can see it automatically brought that up. So if I play that through, you can see it is highlighting each word that I'm actually saying, but I'm not a big fan of the color selection that it picked. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here to track under the inspector on the right. I'm gonna click that. I am going to come down first to font. I'm gonna pick a font that I like. It's normally up here at the top. I think I like the Futurama one. I think that's fine. I'm then gonna pick the color that I want the text to be. I'm gonna make sure it's white. Click that. I'm gonna do the highlight color and I'm actually gonna do that yellow and click that in. And then the outline color, I can enable that if I want. I'm gonna leave that alone, as well as there is a background color if I want it to really pop. If I don't like the color, again, click it. You can change it to whatever you want. Maybe I want it to be a hot pink. That way it's a little easier for the eyes to see. I think that looks really good. Now, the last thing we need to do is we need to export this out because some people may not know that you have to burn this in or you can export it separately if you want to. That's really up to you. So under video, you do your normal thing, name the file, then you would make sure you have the format you want. That's fine. I'm gonna scroll all the way down here to subtitle settings. I'm gonna do export subtitles because otherwise they're not gonna export. And I want to do format. Instead of as a separate file, I want to burn them into the video. If you do not do those steps on exporting it out, you are not gonna see your subtitles in your final video. The next thing inside DaVinci Resolve 20 that is a game changer is audio assistant. 
So you can see I've got, again, a video set up here. There's not a whole lot of layers to it. Let's say it had way more sound effects, way more music, which most of my videos would, but for the purpose of this tutorial, this will work. I would normally need to go through, I'd need to balance my audio as well as the music. And if I wanted to do that, I would hop into Fairlight and then I would adjust my audio according to my video, bringing the tracks up and down. That was a pain in the butt. No one has time for that. Or maybe you're not an audio engineer and you're someone that's just trying to pump out videos faster, or maybe you're just trying to balance things. DaVinci Resolve 20 just made our lives that much easier. So with an in and out point selected, I'm gonna go up here to the left where I see timeline. I'm gonna click that. I'm gonna bring down to AI tools again. I'm gonna click on audio assistant. It's going to bring up this little window right here and you can figure out what delivery standard you're wanting for. For most people, they're just gonna be picking YouTube. However, if you're more advanced, they do have other settings, but we're just gonna click YouTube for now. I'm gonna hit audio mix. Then it's gonna go through and it's gonna mess with my audio, my dialogue, my music, my sound effects, as well as a final mix. Once it's finished, you're all good to go. You can export it out. If I clicked on the Fairlight tab, you can actually see if I play through that it's keeping all my audio over here right where I want it to be between negative one to two to negative five. That's where I want it to be set. Now, if you're an audio engineer, this is probably not gonna be the way you wanna go about it. But for the rest of us editors, this is something that you want to check out. Now, before we go any further with this video, let's talk about today's sponsor, and that is Motion Array. Now, we've talked about a lot of features DaVinci Resolve 20 has. However, there are some things that Motion Array has that will make your life so much easier. One of my favorite things is the voiceover feature. You just hop on their website, you look up the voice you like, you select it, you type in whatever you want it to say, and then you just download it, add it to your NLE, and you're ready to move on. If for some reason that voice is good but not perfect, perfect, you can also change the accent, the speed, as well as the emotion. And if you're looking for more than an amazing voiceover, they've got so much from video presets, templates, they've got LUTs, they've got photos, stock video, music, sound effects, you name it, they really are your one-stop shop for all your video editing needs. If you guys are wanting to check them out, I have a link in the description below. Use that link when you sign up and you get a discount code on an already good deal using Motion Array. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video and other creators just like me. Now this next feature inside DaVinci Resolve 20 is something I have been asking for for so long and that is keyframes that you can mess with a lot better inside the edit page. So I've got a video right here that I added some keyframes, zoomed it in and out. I normally do it over here under the inspector. I'll just add keyframes, go about where I want it. If I wanted to be a punch in, I would do that. So now if I need to change anything of my keyframes, I go up here to the top left, I click keyframes and you can see I've got all of them laid out. I I can go through the entire list of what I had. If I did some different speeds, I could do that as well as I can drop keyframes in here as I'm going along. Maybe I want it to speed up right here and to here, and I don't want to try to find it by looking over here on the right. So it's a lot easier and a lot laid out. Uh, I can also reset just a specific point if I want in some of these perimeters. Now, the other thing you can do is you can also click over here on the very far left, the keyframe curves. So I can click on that, and in here it's gonna show me a lot better view of what I have. If I need to zoom in, I can zoom into it. Let's say I want it to smooth out. I would highlight those two keyframes. I would go right here and smooth them out, and I can actually mess with it and see if I want it to curve a little bit more, maybe something like that. Let's say I wanna click on this this one and I want it to be the opposite, but maybe smooth it out a little bit more. This of course is exaggerating what we actually would be doing. But now if I play that through, you can see it has completely changed the look of just being a hard punch in and out style zoom. And it's all right here on the left. I love that it's got all the perimeters. I can click that down, click on the video, and I can look at everything that I want to. Maybe I wanna shut off some of these. I don't wanna see position Y, so I'm gonna shut it off. It's gonna keep position Y out of the way, and it's just gonna show me the others right Right here. They really stepped it up and showed you things that you can do. The next one I want to talk about is being able to add Photoshop files inside DaVinci Resolve. Now, the older ones, it used to be you could grab a Photoshop file or a project and you could bring it in and then you just have it in there. You could zoom in and out if you wanted to, but it's zooming into the whole thing. So I've got a Photoshop file right here. I'm going to drop it in just like so. You can see it's pretty much like it's a still image. If I wanted to zoom in, same thing, I'd add a keyframe, go somewhere else, 
zoom in real far, that's great, but it's zooming in the entire thing. DaVinci Resolve 20 now lets us actually unstack these if it's a project. So I'm going to right click on it. I'm gonna go right up here to split Photoshop layers in place. Just like that, now you can see all the layers I have. So now if I wanna animate these, I could add a keyframe on the background, zoom it in, as well as I could do the opposite with the character, maybe zoom him in first, then add a keyframe, then go somewhere else. That way it's creating some kind of parallax effect, as well as I could maybe fade the 20 in, however I wanna do it. Now it's giving us something completely different because we can unstack these Photoshop layers. The last one I wanna talk about today is Smooth Cut. So if we go to effects, then we go to toolbox, video transition, smooth cut. I can now grab that, drop it in between these two clips and it's supposed to use intelligence basically to try to seamlessly cut it from one clip to the other where you're not going to notice. Is it perfect? No. Is it still in this beta? We're in that beta DaVinci Resolve 20 state? Yes, but it has a lot of potential. You can see if I just drop it in like normal, played it through, it doesn't look great, looks wonky. I could try to maybe make it a little shorter. Sometimes that helps, play that through. That looks a little better, but you can see if I go frame by frame, it really starts to make my face look a little wonky. However, it's getting better. And again, if we needed to, we could click on the transition itself, go over here under the inspector, do smooth cut, and we could change it to any of these other cuts if we decided we just did not like smooth cut. I like to leave my mode in better, not faster, because it's already trying to really learn. You can mess with the transition curve, the speed warp, so on and so forth. I did test it on another clip where I wasn't moving as much between these two, and I needed to add a smooth cut there, so I'm gonna grab it drop it in, put it right there. Let's trim it up because I think it works better and a little bit shorter of a transition. And you can see that actually works really well. Again, if I play that through frame by frame, I can't really see the cut anywhere. My head is tilting and everything. If you look at my left hand right here, you can see if I go through, it gets a little weird, but it's so fast you're not gonna be able to tell. Something like this has an insane amount of potential for those talking heads, those pieces that you need to trim a word up that someone messed up. This is something that could be a game changer. However, I am just scratching the surface with all the DaVinci Resolve 20 features they have. There are so many things I did not even talk about in audio, fusion, even in the edit page, the color page. There's so much more. If you wanna see more videos about DaVinci Resolve 20, let me know in the comments below as well. If you've played around in it, I want to know what are your favorite features you've messed with. You're amazing. I'm the Iron Giant. I'll see you all next time. Peace.